Hey guys, Eric Kaplan here. Welcome back to Golf Anatomy 101. I'm joined by Allison TG, who is the founder of the Anatomical Lab Soups in the Golf Swing. And what we're talking about today is the role of the right hip in setup, in the backswing, as well as in the downswing. Because again, we're, we're going to talk about quite a bit in our special program together. And again, as a viewer, if you're enjoying this video lesson program, if you want to be notified every single time that Allie and I drop another video program, uh, click the subscribe button below. That way you'll be notified and get a little ding every single time I upload another video lesson just like this. And for those of you that want to dive deeper with Allie and I, we have actually a really special seven-day program that you get access to by clicking the link in the description below. But Allie, let's go and talk about that right hip a little bit more in terms of in setup. You know, where do we want that right hip to be? Also, what does that lower body do in the backswing? Should I try to brace against my lower body from rotating or should I let it rotate a little bit more in the backswing for some players? Um, I, th I, th I think that's a variable. Okay. Um, like we were we were speaking about recently in one of our videos at Dust, with Dustin Johnson that he moves yeah. his hips. Jack Nicholas wanted a three or four hip turn. We can see a lot of our best major champions that actually rotated the hips as part of the takeaway. Um, and then you can also see um, creating a, a, a lot of separation, meaning somebody's making a 70 or 80 degree shoulder turn before the hips ever move. And that's what we For call sure. sequencing. That's a little bit more advanced, but, but there, it basically that is a variable. There isn't really sure. one necessarily that's going to be better than the other, unless somebody has an injury or if it's a, a 60 plus golfer that's having trouble getting his back to the target. So one of the things yeah. we want to teach them is to make the rib cage, make that little simple 45 degree turn and then bump right in and rotate the hips 45, 45 plus 45 backs to the target. So that makes for it sure. really easy. So yeah, we have a lot of, of room for play when it comes to um, what the hip is doing in the backs. So here's what's neat. It can be very personal. 100%. But let, let's talk about Nicholas for a second because I think this is actually an important thing to talk about because I see the golf swing as two halves. We have a top half, the upper body, and the lower yep. body. Exactly. So a guy like Nicholas, somebody would say, hey, he has a very you know, I would say poor posture of the upper body based on how much rounding he had thoracic spine, which of course would limit his range of motion by which he could turn from the upper body relative to the lower body. So what somebody could say is- It could. It could. And so if it does, and he's mitigating his ability to create a rotation from his upper body because he's here, he would be forced to borrow more from there. A guy like Adam Scott, because he's far more neutral, he can, you say sequencing, he can create a much more free range of motion from the upper body and therefore requires a little bit less of the lower body. So I absolutely agree with you that there are certain yeah. variables at play there, yeah. but how much but everything is, go on. Oh, no, Nicholas actually wanted a fuller career hip turn. That was actually, oh. that was a goal of his, whereas oh, Hogan sure. wanted to square off that right foot and minimum his hip turn back speed. But again, who's to say which one was right or wrong? There's not an anatomical quote absolute that says that one is better than the other. So, For sure. so getting back to, yeah, the hip, it's uh, what it does on the right side, that's a that's variable. Now, you, you can create what we can say that is an absolute is remember the analogy of the three link change. You've got the rib cage, you have the pelvis, the abdominal muscles is that middle link that links them together. Those are the muscles that actually attached to keep them working together, that the greater degree of separation, which we learned about this years ago, the X factor. I mean, that was really big when I was 1999, maybe, yeah, or 2000. That was more, yeah, that was more yeah. McLean, yeah. So, yeah, so that's actually, that's actually true, that the greater degree of separation, the more of that boom, it's a cause and effect. That's actually maximizing coil within the abdominal region. Interesting. Whereas when you rotate the ball and socket on top of the hip, that's not that's not my core. I could stand and, and rotate my torso on top of my femur all I want, and my core is not contracting. It's not even rotating. It's not. There is no coil. For sure. So yeah. That's neat. And so what we're going to do um, over the course of the program that we sh that we have together is we're going to show somebody exactly relative to a downline perspective in terms of the, the hip how deep we want it because as you said there's a magic angle of knee flexion that turns on the abductors which is, again is incredibly yeah. important you know again if i have too much not not all that great if i have too little they don't fire <laughs> um, yeah, also <laughs> for sure but also you know why i would not want if i had a, a line right here against my pelvis why i would not want to swing coming off the line 
why I, 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 why I require a little bit of a pressure shift or weight shift into my right side to free up the femur to be able to create a proper coil as well. Right. And so that's what we're going to go through over the course of um, our program together. And again, um, you know, you've certainly laid the foundation by which, you know, anyone who talked about body mechanics um, has probably um, had some form of contact with you directly or indirectly. And so that's where, again, if you're enjoying this video lesson, um, if you want to be notified every single time that Ali and I drop another piece of golf anatomy content out here on YouTube, uh, click the subscribe button below that way you'll be notified. And also, if you want to dive deeper, we have a really special customized structured seven-day video lesson program that's guaranteed to transform your swing in seven days. So again, you can get that link in the description below. Um, Ali, what we're going to talk about next is the role of the right knee. In the golf swing in our next video, we're going to talk about, hey, do we want to straighten it up on the way back? Do we want to keep it flexed? You know, what would be an optimal way to transfer energy, but also improve the quality by which I have my lower body fire more effectively in the downswing?